Whiting here with Paddle TV and this week we're looking at an inflatable versus a hard shell kayak. Which is better? These are two kayaks, same price point, a thousand bucks each, same class. They're both rec touring kayaks, but which is the better choice? Before we get right into it, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already because we got lots more gear reviews, tips, and paddling adventures coming your way. Let's get right into it. So this one here, this is the Jackson Kayak Tupelo 12.5. Uh, this, as I mentioned, is a rec touring kayak, 12 and a half feet long. This is the Sea Eagle Razor Light 393RL. And similarly, it's around 12 feet long. It's a, what I'd call a rec touring kayak. This one is $9.99. This one is $9.99 US dollars. What should you choose? I mean, there's a growing trend towards inflatable kayaks right now. There's a lot of these, these suckers here being sold. Uh, and the reason for it is transportability and stowability. All of a sudden, with an inflatable kayak, you don't need to have roof racks. You don't need to have a trailer or a pickup to move a big Thing like this around nor do you have to know how to tie st stuff down and not kill someone um, they also you don't need a garage you don't need a lot of room to store it you can just literally throw this thing in your closet it fits into a little backpack and and that's that used to come at an immense cost of quality uh, inflatable kayaks for the longest time i mean they were crap straight up they were crappy they weren't a good option um, but nowadays, there are a number of manufacturers that are making high quality inflatable kayaks. I mean, they're, they are very comparable in performance to a hard shell, but they're not quite as good. There's a price that comes with having a kayak that can go into the trunk of any car or in the back seat or in, and stored in your closet. Um, and the price for that is performance, comfort, durability and features and we're going to take a, a look at those four things one at a time and really identify okay what is that price and is it worth it now i just got off the water with this boat here i was doing a full gear review of this boat uh, my first time ever trying it and so there's actually uh, there's a there'll be a link in the description box down below to that full gear review if you're interested performance wise it paddled beautifully. You know, it is fast. I mean, it didn't feel like an inflatable kayak. It wasn't the most stable kayak, but that's not what it's designed for. It's designed to be a relatively stable kayak that's fast and can cover ground, is fun to paddle, and it was. But the Tupelo is a little bit faster. The reason this Razor Light came so close to there's a couple of things. Um, it has these foot pegs right here. Now, a lot of inflatable kayaks don't come with foot pegs. The uh, Tupelo has foot pegs as well, but the foot pegs do play a real role in performance. When I, every stroke I'm taking, when I take a stroke on my left, I'm pushing off my left foot. And when I take a stroke on the right, I'm pushing off my right foot. There's real power that comes from that. And actually, not only just power, but there's comfort that comes from having that solid support. And so if you don't have an inflatable kayak that has that solid support that this one does, then you're not only losing power, but for me, I actually lose comfort. Otherwise, this one didn't give up much in the way of performance. This was a, a wonderful boat to paddle. A lot of inflatables will give up a lot more performance, especially ones that aren't drop stitch designed. Now, when I say drop stitch design, this one is built with this drop stitch technology, which lets you pump it up to 10 PSI. A lot of cheaper inflatable kayaks can only get pumped up to two or three PSI. Those kayaks feel a lot more flimsy, a lot, definitely a lot softer, and you definitely give up performance with something that's that soft. With a drop stitch design, you can pump up to 10 PSI. You know what? Yeah, like I said, very small difference in performance between these two kayaks. Moving on, comfort. I think the biggest difference in comfort is this sucker right here, this seat. This is a nice seat for an inflatable kayak. It's got a nice, thick, padded seat here. Not only is it comfortable to sit on, but it keeps your butt 
drier off the, the wet bottom. Nice high back, lots of support there. This is a solid seat, but it's just not as comfortable as the seat you get in the Tupelo. This seat right here, it has, it's higher for one. So not only keeps your butt dry, but when your butt is higher than your feet, it's just naturally a more comfortable position. The fabric on this thing is quick drying and draining. So if it does get wet, it's not as big of a deal. The, the seat here has built-in lumbar support, lots of support there. It's just a, a more solid seat. And as a bonus, this is a kick butt camp chair. You know, it does clip in there, so it's not gonna fall out when you're using it, but um, it's great around camp, absolutely awesome. That's the biggest difference for comfort, and comfort for me is a big deal. So that's a good reason right alone, uh, alone to go for the hard shell. Uh, durability. Now, it goes without saying an inflatable kayak is not going to be as durable as a hard shell kayak. That being said, it's amazing how durable they've made these uh, inflatables, the high quality inflatables. You do need to treat them well and you do need to do some very light maintenance. You have to make sure you don't get sand in the valves or dirt in the valves, keep those areas clean. You have to uh, just, before you stow it away, make sure it's dry and clean. Um, but, and if you, well, you know, if you do get a tear or you do get a puncture, this particular one has three different chambers, side, bottom, and side. So you're not gonna sink if one gets punctured and you, you completely lose all the air. You're still gonna limp be able to limp to shore uh, and you can repair it. They come with a repair kit. So, and I've had to repair a, uh, an inflatable before and it was, it was a bit of a pain in the butt, but it wasn't that big of a deal at all. That's durability. Now, lastly, features. The Razor Light, it's a solid, solid kayak, but it doesn't really have any extra features. And that might not be of any concern to you, but the hard shell, to look at the features that it does have, the hard shell, the Tupelo, for one, it has a hatch, and the hatch here is accesses a separate compartment from the front compartment because there's a bulkhead here. It's a wall right here that theoretically makes for a watertight compartment here. There's always some leakage, so I wouldn't ever put anything dry in here and expect it to stay dry, but it, you do have a separate compartment here, and that's great for camping gear for multi-day trips. It's also a nice little safety uh, feature because if you do ever flip and the whole boat swamps, well this area is not going to swamp it. It's going to remain the flotation for the kayak. It also has gear tracks. Now these gear tracks, they're designed to accommodate a huge variety of, of T-bolt accessories and there's all sorts of accessories that, that just slide on here. Rod holders, cup holders, uh, GPS holders, phone holders. I mean, there's so many different types of accessories you can get right now. Camera mounts. Um, that's probably the most popular one these days. GoPro mounts or different camera mounts. And, uh, and then it also has feature-wise, it just has deck bungees for stowing dry bags or um, some gear for the trip. Do those matter to you? I don't know. That's up to you. And that's really the, the answer to the question of a hard shell or an inflatable, what's the right kayak for you? If uh, transportability and stowability isn't just a bonus, it's an absolute essential. You don't have anywhere to stow a kayak. You don't have a vehicle that can transport a kayak, then this is kind of a mute point. There's some great inflatable kayaks in there around and you do not have to feel like you're getting a subpar kayak just because you have to get an inflatable. Yes, you are giving up a little bit, you're giving up a little bit of performance, you're giving up a little bit of comfort, and you're giving up a little bit of durability and a few little features if they matter to you. But if you need that stowability and, and transportability, don't worry about it. On the other hand, if, <laughs> you know, if you're in that position where you kind of like something that you don't have to tie onto the top of your vehicle, but you kind of like some of the features, you want something a bit more comfortable and you want something that you can attach a camera to very easily, then, you know, you've got a hard decision ahead between the two. Nice thing is, uh, at this price point, it's really hard to go wrong. The best thing to do, as always, is to go to your local paddling shop, ask them. Tell them what you're interested in 
and uh, get their opinion and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Paddle TV already, please do subscribe because we got lots more tips and gear reviews, paddling ventures coming your way. And do uh, like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment down below. Tell me your thoughts about inflatables versus hard shells or ask me any questions you want and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And we'll see you again for another Paddle TV episode. Mm -hmm.